It's a beautiful day today and we're reading about some more entitled parents. I'm so excited for this episode and I hope you guys are too. Let's get into it. Enjoy guys. Karen tries to ruin a cancer patient's make-a-wish day so that her child won't be inconvenienced. I saw the absolute end-all be-all last week. I work for a small production company and we do a ton of charitable work. That day, a few of our crew members, including myself, were lent out for a make-a-wish type of thing. For a girl whose wish was to have her original song made into a music video, she was battling cancer, so of course, every precaution had to be taken, COVID-wise. The director reserved a scenic section of the park and got all set up there so we could be outdoors with plenty of distance. Apparently, this was the only section of the park that had a picnic area. We weren't aware of this and occasionally some people would come over pretty miffed asking why we'd reserved the whole picnic area. But before they could get the whole complaint out they'd realise the situation and they'd leave us be. Embarrassed to have even asked. This young lady was around 14 or 15 and having a great time shooting these scenes for a music video until Q Karen, a mess of cheap Botox and overpriced athleisure gear, started crossing over our clearly marked barricades with her daughter around 6 or 7. Our PA production assistant rushed over, figuring she was just too dumb to notice all of our signage and physical blockade and explained in a hushed tone that she was intruding on a private film set. Karen replied intentionally loud that it was a public park and she had every right to use any part of it that she pleased. Now, was it a tad bit inconvenient that we commanded a large strip of public land, the only area without seating? Absolutely. But the handful of people who'd wander over to complain immediately processed the nature of this project and gladly made other plans for themselves. Karen wasn't budging, but we had a permit from the city to be there, so we let her know she could quiet down or shove off. We actually had a right to have her ejected if she was being disrespectful disruptive to our filming. We really didn't want to though, and we didn't exactly have the manpower to do it without calling authorities, and we didn't want to put a damper on this fun event or make a scene in front of her daughter, so the director paused the filming to try and de-escalate things. There was supposed to be a liaison from the Make-A-Wish style program there, but the catering guy had gotten lost on the way to the park, and she'd gone to look for him. So the director showed Karen the permit we had, and warned her a final time that she either needed to watch calmly, or get out of there. She pulled her young daughter off to the side and started trying to goad her into singing. The kid was better able to read the room than mum because she was too embarrassed to even start singing and tried saying that she wanted to wait until she got home. But Karen kept on pointing her phone camera at the kid and shrieking that she wanted her to sing there and then so she could film it. Eventually, she started playing some Disney song on her phone and the kid began hissing along, interrupting our footage, much to Karen's twisted satisfaction. Finally, the director had had it and informed her that even though she had technically moved off the land that we'd physically reserved, that the noise she and her daughter were generating was disruptive so he could still have her removed. I'm not even sure this is true, but I think he just correctly assumed that Hello 911, this woman is harassing a young girl with cancer trying to experience her make a wish day. Would not end in Karen's favour, but Karen's pride wouldn't allow her to simply walk away from the situation. So once her daughter had ceased the loud off-key singing, she continued lingering even as her child begged her to go play by a pond that was almost a quarter of a mile away. Karen continually tried to force her daughter into the shot with hopes that it'd make us move, cruelly getting her kids' hopes up and then dashing them repeatedly. So I guess the kid wasn't especially bright either. She'd keep saying, look baby, they're making a movie. Quick go be in the movie so you can get famous hurry and the girl would run over onto our set or she would try to and a PA or the key grip would return her to her mum before she could run across our shot but her daughter's anguished cries of disappointment at not becoming famous each time we returned her to her mum were enough to render most of the footage if not useless at least a lot less fun than it was intended to be I guess Karen didn't think that we heard her goading her child into disrupting us with her fake promises of superstardom because when the director came over for her final warning she tried to play dumb saying oh I think she's just dead set on using the picnic space, since this is the only picnic space in the entire park, it'd probably just be easier for you to move, huh? Said with a combination of faux sweetness and imagined authority. Clearly, she had no idea what it takes to set up for a film if she thought that we could just move locations on a whim. The director turned out to be bluffing on calling the cops because he didn't want to create a scene until the liaison returned, so he just had a couple of big crew guys keep her and her daughter at bay. Eventually, the liaison did come back, but to be honest, she wasn't really helpful. Karen deduced that she was who was in charge and who everybody was waiting for in order to take action. So magically shaped up the minute she appeared and stood quietly to the side. Yeah, of course. So when every crew member descended on the liaison at once, she just meekly said, well, it's okay that she watches, right? People are probably just curious what's going on. Thankfully, the girl in the video had been having her makeup done for most of this, while we filmed a backup dancer scene, so didn't really notice most of the debacle and didn't care one way or another. Because Karen had a little kid with her, the girl didn't say that she couldn't watch. Even though she was visibly uncomfortable at the strange audience, she kept waving to and winking 
at the little girl though, who thought she was some kind of celebrity. It was actually pretty cute and a perfect compliment to her music video make a wish. Karen hated that and kept muttering to passers-by trying to surmount insurrection. But unbeknownst to her, just about everybody in the general area was affiliated with our shoot. She did find one or two people who were irritated about the picnic area shutting, thinking that we were some greedy private party who just sectioned it off from the other guests. But then they realized it was some kind of film production and started milling around out of vital curiosity. Again, we were mainly filming backup dancers at this point, a couple of the girl's friends. So I give credit to Karen that if she wasn't paying a lot of close attention to the filming itself, it may not have been immediately obvious what we were doing at that point. That still doesn't make what she did next okay. She'd make the occasional comment to the other picnic people and was winning some of them over. She'd say something like, but do they need the entire space? And then get an affirmative nod. Whatever. I don't think the other people were really listening. They were watching too intently, waiting for somebody famous to pop out in the music video. Our tech people determined that it wasn't interfering with the audio, so we had begun to ignore it as long as she stayed out of the way. And then the star girl comes out for a big emotional dance scene, and she is giving it a roll. So Karen decides to chuck in another blow by turning to a woman nearest her and saying, again, loud enough for everybody to hear, oh god, look, it's one of those girls who thinks it's cool to pretend to be a boy. I'll bet she hasn't stopped to consider how long it'll take to grow her hair back. Wow, that's awful. You'd think that Karen would have stopped for a second to consider that maybe the girl was not cultivating a chic new look, and in fact had cancer, or better yet, that maybe a stranger's hairstyle wasn't her business in any case, and maybe her not having eyebrows or arm hair either was a clue, but no. So our poor starring girl hears this and crumples into tears, now assuming that the crowds had been gathering during the day weren't doing so because she was a famous pop star, but instead to gawk because she was strange looking. She rushed away and those standing anywhere near Karen hurried off to make clear that they weren't associated with her. That's when the liaison realised what we'd been trying to warn her about with Karen's behaviour, and tore into her along with several members of the girl's extended family. Like a true coward, Karen didn't even try to apologise. She just bolted as quickly as she could saying, you know, maybe we'll find a different spot, since you're clearly busy. As though she were doing us a special consideration, luckily our lead girl's entire extended family was there, and they cheered her up very fast, and some supportive civilians had showed up and they had genuine curiosity about the film set, and then loved watching her dance for no other reason than they loved watching her dance. So she was happy and having fun again very fast after Karen skulked off, but still really quite a hurtful and inappropriate spectacle. If she gets this worked up over a picnic table, I can only imagine when her daughter starts to face real life challenges. Yeah, that's right, OP. Oh, stuff like this is so sad because it doesn't need to happen. Like once again, somebody is making a situation awful when they don't have to. It's so hard to read about stuff like that because not only is it infuriating, but it's sad. The next one is an update to a post we read about five months ago called My Parents Want to Give My Sister the Earrings That My Grandma Left For Me. I can't remember that post that well, so I'm going to read it again really fast and then the update. My parents want to give my sister the earrings that my grandma left for me. This story is so weird. When I, 27 female, was 20 years old, I was in a relationship sort of friends with benefit situation with a guy, now 40 male. It was messy. We were on and off for almost five years. He always made it clear that he wasn't ready for a relationship and I was always clear that I was madly in love with him. Every time I got tired of the situation and I wanted to leave, somehow he convinced me to stay because love is free. We have so much time together and he wasn't ready for commitment. I asked my sister advice, now 42 female, and she gave me some crappy advice like make him compromise, leave stuff at his place and basically turn him into a boyfriend until it was too late for him to say no. I never did that because I wanted him to love me as much as I loved him, not trap him. During the last night I spent at his place, he said that he wanted to try something more serious and talked about some dates he was planning, only to ghost me forever. It was hard. This was the first person I loved and he treated me like crap. Six months passed and my sister came home. We both lived with our parents, saying that she wanted to introduce her brand new boyfriend. Oh yeah, I remember this one. She had had tons of boyfriends, but she said this was the one. It was a dinner only with my parents at our home, so I was excluded and I was expected to just go out and chill in my room. The day came and while they were dining, I ordered a pizza and I came downstairs, only to find the guy that I was with six months prior, dining with my parents and my sister. I was shocked, but I paid for my pizza and I went to my room again to cry. After dinner was over, I confronted my sister in front of her parents and I begged her to not be with him, to be loyal to me, her little sister. There was no way that she didn't know who he was. I had showed her pictures of him, his social media, where he worked, and she even knew where he lived. They never met because he didn't want to meet my family and never introduced us, but she knew who he was and she excluded me from that dinner because she knew. Such a revolting thing to do. She said they met by chance after we stopped seeing each other. She knew how painful it was to not have any closure. He just stopped replying, not even blocking me, just left me there wondering after five years. She knew that during those six months I was still hurting. I know how it was my fault. I was too naive and I thought that if I stayed long enough he'd be ready for the relationship I wanted and would learn to love me. Stupid, I know. She defended herself saying that it was a coincidence and chemistry was there. Find somebody else. Imagine your sister gets out of a relationship with somebody and then you date them. She loved him and she wasn't going to lose the love of her life. This stuff only happens
happens once in a lifetime. When I was in my early 20s, I would have believed that. However, now I know that there are 8 billion people in this world. There's no one love of your life. You can find the love of your life multiple times if you look for it. My parents sided with her and said that I should get over it since we never had a real relationship. One and a half years had passed. I've been excluded from multiple family gatherings because he'd be around and my family thinks I'd bring negative vibes since I'm still bitter about everything. And so you bloody should be, OP. It's a disgusting situation. I don't get how they didn't side with you. I have no feelings for him, but I feel betrayed by my sisters and my parents. He's just a piece of crap in my eyes now. My sister is now six months pregnant. Due to her age, she'd been extremely pampered by my parents. She does still live at home and is going to try and move in with him in maybe two months after the baby's born. Then they're going to marry. In my culture, it's normal that if a woman gives birth, they move back or stay with her mum so the mum will help with the baby for the first few months. A week ago, my sister's friend made a surprise baby shower when I happened to be at home. I tried to talk to them. I don't know why. Maybe because my sister and I were too close before and I'm sad that we're no longer friends. But her friends acted like I wasn't even there and only replied to me with, hmm, yeah, no, or silence. As if I was the one that created this mess or I was a home wrecker, or I tried to seduce my sister's man. I was planning to move already. I was saving money. But after that, I left immediately to a friend's house. I'm in the process of finding my own place. Two days ago, I received a call from my parents asking me to have a talk. I went to their house and they informed me that the diamond earrings my grandma left to me will be given to my sisters. Those earrings have been in my family for four generations. And before my grandma died, she said the earrings will be mine and my sister will receive a gold necklace. Grandma trusted my parents with the earrings. There was no will or anything. She just asked them to give them to me when I was mature enough to appreciate and take care of a family heirloom. Now my parents think that since my sister is getting married first and is having grandma's first grandchild that my sister should have it. I'm really mad now. They're robbing me of something that my grandma left to me. I don't think my parents are evil evil. I think they were too worried that my sister wouldn't marry due to her age. Again, in my culture, a single woman in her 40s is something to worry for her family. And now that she is forming a family, they want to reward her with everything. But I was the closest to my grandma. She made it clear that the earrings will be mine, not my sister's. Not the first one to marry or to have a child, but mine. After two years of being excluded in favor of my sisters, I gave the ultimatum to my parents that they give the earrings to me as my grandma intended, or I'm going to cut them from my life forever. Not going to lie, the idea of cutting my family off is too painful, but I feel they already made me, and it still makes me so wrong that I don't want them in my life anymore. I feel a little shallow fighting over this, but those are the only things my grandma left to me, and they're not entitled to them. Okay, we have an update here. Update. This one is old, but I keep receiving messages every once in a while asking for an update. Yes, I got the earrings. After my post, I went to my parents' house and I opened the safe. I took the earrings and I left. Hell yeah, OP. Then after that, I went again, told my parents I need to process stuff and be on my own self, and I gave their house keys, said I was leaving for good. There were some tears from my mum saying that she couldn't believe I was such a bitter person. Oh, what? She raised me better. I was turning my back to my family over nothing. Oh, get out of here. And finally, that it was shameful that I'd leave the family house without being married or anything. So it was never about me or she loving me or anything, but social pressure to keep an outdated tradition. My dad was very neutral, gave me a hug and wished me luck. For two months, nothing happened and I barely had contact with my family. I found a place to live and try to heal. Have real fun decorating my new home, your normal stuff, and then everything happened at once. For those two months, my sister and mum never reached out to me. Only my dad sent me a text once a week asking how I was and wishing me well. And then my sister's boyfriend, future husband, also my ex, started to follow me on Instagram again. I found it weird, but anyway, after all this, my sister's boyfriend and father of my niece and future brother-in-law and my ex-friend with benefits, then he started to like my stories and replying to them with the heart emojis and looking good. What? This happened three times, maybe? And then I received a voicemail from my mum calling me all sorts of names for going after a man that I knew was engaged. This was some kind of revenge over my poor sister and that I was causing her so much stress that her blood pressure level was over the moon, that I was an inconsiderate femme fatale and she raised me better. Later, I learned through a cousin that my sister took her fiance's cell phone and found several conversations with several different women, including his attempts to try to talk to me. So of course, she went to my mum crying about me trying to steal her fiance. All messy, to be honest. Less than a week later, another voicemail from my mum asking me where the hell were the earrings? She went looking for them and when she couldn't find them, she figured out that it was me. She called me a thief, a disgrace, disowned me and said they didn't consider me family anymore and she'll be taking legal actions against me for theft if possible. I had no choice but to block her and my sister and other family members that sided with them. My dad later texted me to let me know that my mum went nuts and they won't take any legal action. By the end of last month, my cousin texted me saying that my sister had given birth to my niece. I know I shouldn't, but I did it. I went to the hospital with a gift while wearing my beautiful and fancy earrings. I was kicked out, of course, but it was worth it. I have no plans to see them ever again. Well, maybe my dad. Also, my cousin, big gossiper that girl, let me know that my sister is getting married in May, so she will have her happy ever after after all. But I'm also living my best life right now. Yeah, like the top comment says, don't think your sister will be getting a happy ending. If her husband isn't already cheating on her, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, they already are, aren't they? 
And like this other comment says, actually you won. You don't have to deal with this BS and on top of it, you got the earrings and you're living your best life. Yeah, that's definitely the upside here, OP. You don't have to be around them anymore. I feel so sorry for you though. What an awful situation. And this super toxic family that doesn't even believe you acting like you're the bloody enemy or something. Yeah, that's revolting. They can keep their bloody cheating husband. The next one and probably last one for today. My neighbor wants to control what I wear in my house. So Wednesday, I 16 female was sick and I had a fever and I felt really bad. So I stayed home from school and I was spending most of the day lying in bed. But around noon, I moved to the living room couch because it was getting really hot in my room and it was cool in the living room. And for some context, our living room has large windows on two walls. One points at the street in front of the house and the other to my neighbor's house on the left of our house. So I went to the couch and I still feel hot. So I took off my shirt. And at that point, I was only wearing short shorts and my bra. I was lying down for a few minutes when there was a knock on the door and my mum went to go and answer it. The living room is right next to the door. So it wasn't hard to hear the conversation. So my mum opened the door and the neighbor who we'll call Karen was there and said, hi, Susan, my mum, if you need clarification, how are you doing? I came over to tell you to tell your daughter to cover up. My mum then reasonably said, excuse me, to which Karen replied, yeah, it's kind of weird that she's exposing herself like that. Well, what? My mum, now a bit less patient, said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you could tell me what to do with my kids in my house. Yeah, good response. Karen then said, oh, no, that's not what I'm trying to do. It's just that my husband's office is right across from your windows and it's hard for him to concentrate on his work when there's a naked teen on the other side of his window. What the hell? My mum was just about as dumbfounded as I was at this point and told Karen, okay, three things. First, my daughter's not naked and even if she was, it wouldn't matter because she lives here and she can wear whatever she wants to. Second, what is your husband, a 45-year-old man doing looking at my 16-year-old daughter in her underwear? And third, get off my property because we're done here. And with that, my mum slammed the door in Karen's face. My mum saw the husband later that day when he was taking out the trash and she told him to stop looking at me through the windows. He was confused and my mum explained what happened and he said, I didn't work from home today. He was then apologizing for his wife and went inside and we haven't heard from them since. And on Thursday, my mum brought curtains for the living room windows. So yeah, that was my encounter with our neighbors. Wow, so Karen blamed it on her husband when the husband wasn't even there. Yeah, like the top comment says, wow, so you had a peeping Karen instead of a peeping Tom. I'm so happy to hear your mum ripping her apart. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, how awful. And your mum sounds like a legend, OP. That one is so wild. Like not only for what they said to you and your mum, OP, but the fact that they tried to blame their husband on it, making their husband look like a creepy weirdo. That is so gross. I'm so happy your mum went off at them, OP. And yeah, I feel like that's enough for today. It's been a wonderful episode, but we need to read something wholesome. Oh, cute. A buddy gator comic. I've forgotten which way the exit is. Is it left or right? Thanks, guys. No, helpful little bees. These are always so simple, but they're so cute. When you're in bed and your charge is too far away on the floor. That's so relatable and also adorable. Look at that little kitty cat. So cute. Oh, another one. These are for you, Angie. It's beautiful. I'm going to put them in my room. Oh, that's so nice and a beautiful place to end today's episode. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Maya. Fun news, my boyfriend proposed yesterday. So I guess actually actually fiance. Oh, well, congratulations. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I hope you guys have a beautiful life together. That's the ultimate wholesome meme. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you for all the support, everybody. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye.